Yo, what's up? So today we're gonna check out how to turn Granulator 3 into a slicing granulator sampler. By default, it just behaves as kind of like a sampler instrument where we can play the sample melodically with all the granular options. But let's see how to set it up with just a few changes into a slicing granular sampler, which is amazing when using full loops and getting all sorts of amazing musical material out of it. Let's check it out. Okay, so first I also prepared a rack for you. We're gonna go over everything, but this rack is aimed for full song starters, maybe something like, like this. I'm gonna drag it in. And then I can just use individual notes here. Let's open a MIDI clip. And I can start playing around with just individual notes and it's gonna slice it. Let's launch that. Let's uh, duplicate that a few times and then you can start playing around with them. Uh, you can of course also play with your MIDI keyboard. And there's a bunch of uh, macros. show you a phasing technique, uh, kind of turn the phaser into more of a jet, kind of old school jet phaser, and a bunch more stuff. So uh, before we check out the rack, let's just see Granulator by itself and how to turn it into a slicing granular sampler. I'm going to load the Granulator 3. This is a free download if you have Ableton Suite. Let's load it to a new MIDI track. And it doesn't matter where we are. Let's be in the arrangement view. doesn't matter. Okay. So first of all, let's load a sample. You can also resample your own tracks and bring a full track. Probably you can do it with drums, but uh, maybe without drums will be even better. Now, by default, the Granulator is a melodic sampler. So it does loop a very short section out of the sample. We can change that with the position, but I can play it melodically using my MIDI keyboard or a MIDI clip. So first thing we want to do to turn it into a slicing granular sampler is to go to the transpose button and right here turn off the key tracking for the transposition. So now when I play different notes, it's going to trigger the same pitch. Next, I'm going to take the position. Let's bring it down. And here, once I click on the position, I'm going to modulate it with the key tracking. Now, this doesn't have to be 100 uh, all the way full amount because if I play C, it's playing the first section. But then if I play C sharp, it jumps pretty far away in the sample. So maybe like 45. Okay, and I'm just going chromatically on my keyboard. Let me also load my uh, keyboard monitor just so we can see what I'm playing. Let's open this up. And let's make it a bit bigger. So this is the only thing I'm playing on my MIDI keyboard. Nice. Now there's a few other things you can do here. First, we can turn on the mono so we can play multiple notes at one time, multiple samples. That's useful when using this type of loops. And maybe we'll also add some glide. Like let's do 120 milliseconds. So when I overlap different notes, and we can do it even longer to just emphasize what it's doing. It's going to slide or slide the position. So it's kind of gliding our position, our looping. Let's bring it back to 120. Nice. Uh, if you want to add variation, so it doesn't loop exactly the same, we can just bring it up here. And now we can hear some variations of the looping. Nice. Uh, uh, the shape is just for more dynamic uh, control. However, you want kind of the looping uh, dynamic envelope to be. And the grain size is the length or uh, the size of the looping. Now, if you want to synchronize this, because it's on milliseconds, you're going to have to use uh, some BPM uh, milliseconds to BPM converter. There is a free Max Volar device. I'll put the link in the description called BPM converter. And this one will tell us according to our BPM right now with 120, let's put it on like 136. And let's uh, put it on like, let's say 441. And now it's a, it's always a half time from this. So it's ha uh, eighth notes. Let's do like 221. So 
for the 16th notes. Uh, so it's very useful uh, when using this type of grain size calculation, BPM converter is free. So you can check that out. Uh, nice. Now, the, we, we made a rack for this because this is super useful to do. If you want, by the way, instead of this engine, the classic, we can go into loop engine. Let's make it simple. And in the loop engine, if you click on the grain size, you can also add percentage of what's the percentage of the looping to be reversed. Listen to this. So that can also be useful if you want to use that. Let's keep it at classic. Nice. So let me show you the rack that I've prepared. It's called a granular slicing. And you got to drop, first of all, your sample here. Maybe we'll choose a different sample now. Eh, what random thing. I think that's the beauty of it. You can just, you can just throw random things. And it's always happy accidents of what's happening. Nice. So we mapped a few things here. First of all, the pitch spread. Right here we have this pitch spread, which will spread the pitch from left to right and will transpose it. Uh, because it's extremely, uh, it's a stereo effect, so differences between the left and right channels, uh, I did uh, added a utility, and also the utility is mapped to the width, so it's kind of bringing the stereo a bit into the middle, more mono. And all of this, of course, is aimed to be uh, automated or mapped to MIDI. And, and being in play with it real time. There's just the variation. To add some variation to the looping. Scanning can be really cool because your MIDI clips can also be something like this. Let's create a MIDI clip here. Uh, let me do like eight bars. And I can do just one note, whatever note you want to start with. And then I can automate the scan. So the scan is this control right here, and this is how much is going to move ahead in the playback. If it's, this is on one, let me unmap it a second. If this is just on one, it's just going to play it in the original speed. It's just scanning the sample in full in 100%. And you can also do times four. So once we map it to a macro, now we can automate this. Let me close this. We can automate it in a way that we just automate it momentarily, but then it's it continues from that place. And then whenever you re-trigger the sample, so if I let me do it every let's do something like this every third one, third third and third and i'm gonna loop this oh i guess i right here i'm gonna loop this and once it's triggered this the note again it's gonna reset from the original position let's also play with the pitch break although that kind of felt like the ending we'll have to uh, match our grain size to our BPM because right now it doesn't seem like it's on the BPM. So let me just cut it here just so we can hear it resetting. Okay, so every time you re-trigger the note, it resets the position. So scanning can also be really great for all these type of happy accidents. And I think that's the main thing here with this technique of using the granulator as a slicing granular sampler is its endless, amazing, happy accidents. Uh, shape, just map to the shape. This granulator also have this dual filter. So here I selected the low pass and notch. So we have this control here with the resonance up. So really nice filtering. Also have some stereo effects with some differences between the left and right with the width. A space, just some a, a custom hybrid river preset that I made. You can save it as its own preset. And what I did here with the phasing, check this out is I took the phaser, I take the amount all the way down so we can manually change the frequency of the notches with, a, with just our own LFO. This goes uh, eight bars. So it's kind of like an old school, if anyone ever used the old, old CDJs, CDJs 100, 
I think it was the first CDJs. Or oh, CDJ 1000? No, I think it was 100. Like the first one had only three effects. One of them was Jet. So this is kind of similar to like very old school phaser. You know what? I need to, we need some more feedback here. Here we go. Right, so this uh, slicing, uh, granular slicing instrument track, I will share it for free. Check the download in the description, but do not forget, I will just share the link for this. Uh, if you want to work with it, with your projects and with drums and stuff, you will need to make sure that you're uh, adjusting the grain size accordingly. So here I would put it maybe on 441. Let's turn on the metronome. Let's put in some notes here. Maybe I'll just randomize them with the, let's go generate, seed, give us long notes, one at a time. I want really long notes, fill it up. And let's do something like this. Yeah. And I can hit continue hitting command enter. Or keep changing the sample. Granulator 3 as a slicing uh, granular sampler, super amazing for coming up, starting with musical ideas, doing all those uh, granular kind of sound uh, slicing and looping. And this is a free rack. I'll catch you next time. Oh, 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 oh,